لگے آفری زہے خل کے کامل زہے حسن تام زہے خل کے کامل زہے حسن تام علیک سلا
A servant of you humbly proclaims, O Emperor of both worlds, O Emperor of highest station, upon you be peace, upon you be blessing. The most handsome in the world felt embarrassed upon observing his perfect beauty, his dazzling continence. On the top of that, an embodiment of such perfect models that even his enemies loved him. What perfect models, what everlasting charm, upon you be peace, upon you be blessing. The hearts of humanity were devoid of faith. Such terrible darkness had descended upon earth that unity of Allah was impossible to find. By your advent, it was re-established. Upon you be peace, upon you be blessing. With his love, he in trans ignorance was eradicated by him. He explained in detail all that was lawful and all that was not. Upon you be peace, upon you be blessing. Every one of the possible qualities of prophethood were combined with him, without exception, without limit. The attributes of, the beauty, of beauty, the attributes of dignity, every color of personality, unique and matchless. He avenged transgression with forgiveness. Upon you be peace, upon you be blessing. Thank you. Yes, First of all, I would like to draw your attention that I am not a conventional speaker anymore. Today I will briefly, today I will briefly show, uh, speak about uh, the qualities, human qualities of our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I used to present a sketch of the pious character and lofty morals of our Lord and Master of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the Holy Quran testifies in chapter 68, verses 5. The meaning is that on those, those surely possess high morals of excellences. No one could have pointed, painted a better picture of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam character than heavenly testimony. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha testifies that his every deed was aimed at attaining the pleasure of God and he stayed away from anything that was likely to incur his displeasure. Yazid bin Babnut radiallahu anha relates that we once after Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha to inform us about the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa character, his morals. She replied, his morals were found in Quran. She then said, if you know Surah al muminun by heart, please decide it for me. He recited the first ten verses of the Surah, of that Surah, which began in in chapter 23, verse 2. The meaning is that surely success does come to the believers who are humble in their prayers and who shun all that which vain and who are active in paying the jakar and who guard their chastity except from their wives or what their right hand possess. For them, they are not to be blamed, but those who seek anything beyond that are transgressors and who are what full of trust and their covenants and who diligently guard the observance of their prayers. After listening to these verses, Hazrat Aisha Radiallahu said, these are exactly the excellent morals of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Hadrat Aisha radiallahu anha in other words testified the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam moral in keeping with the Holy Quran. This means, firstly, that all the qualities of writers were to be found in the, in the heart of Holy Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by acting upon the teachings of the Quran, he displayed such a perfect character, which the Holy Quran has called the excellent example. Secondly, it means that he demonstrated all the teaching of Holy Quran and became a living image. The excellent of morals of Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi found one can only wonder at the excellent morals of one concerning whom God of heaven himself testifies and saying that you are indeed established upon the highest morals. Similarly, valuable is the testimony given by Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha after 15 years <coughs> of marital companionship with Hazrat Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said he was kind to his relatives, shared other people's burdens, revived the lost morals and virtues. Was, he was also hospitable and helped people who were suffer, suffering in the cause of truth. She said that God would never destroy a person of such qualities. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha realized that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam never uttered a word, nor did he shout in the marketplace. He never did it. He did not irritate any with a will. He would instead demonstrate forgiveness and forbearance. The companions related to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Islam was the most beloved of all people. Whenever he had tried between two things, he would always choose the easier one. There was none who possessed greater self-control than any other human being. His modesty surpassed even that of or the virgin like Hazrat Ibn Abbas relates that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Islam was the most generous in all people. Whenever the Holy Prophet Muhammad was asked for something, he gave it straight away without hesitation. He distributed the experts of war the same day it arrived. Such was his faith in God and he never saved for the next day any more anything. The Prophet Muhammad was the most righteous of people and refrained from the comfort of the world. He said that he was like a tabela who lies down for a while to rest under a tree, then moves on again and again. He was so brave that he would charge at any animal all alone and would never retreat. He was the most courageous of all people. His forgiveness was beyond undoubtedly in a way. His forgiveness was of a such a high quality. He even pardoned his moral enemies <coughs> at all times. In short, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Islam possessed the highest morals. He was the perfect manifestation of divine attributes. He was such a beautiful and perfect example for mankind that even today we can reach God by following Him. Even today when our Lord and our Master sees these qualities in a person, He begins to love Him. The truth is, you are Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi based one by name and by deed. Peace be on you and the blessings of God. Thank you so much. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم
as we know that um, again to clarify that what are the purpose of this practice what what is the purpose of such session the purpose of such session is called sirat al nabi that is we discuss about the life of prophet discussing life of anyone or any prophet there should be some purpose the purpose is today's world is uh, full of difficulties different type of multiple types of uh, problems are there religious intolerance geopolitical injustices greed for the wealth of other countries are a trend of prevailing social injustices discord in family so to overcome these situations we need examples and according to the prophecy of different prophet and according to the verses of the holy quran muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that person in whom we see and we find and we read such examples some are mentioned here by mr rani in his speech if we follow at least if everybody attaches himself one of his qualities then he can turn his family his society into a better one now all the as i said there are religious intolerance in the society most of the problems and chaos and disorder we see in the society today people mainly blame that for um, for that mainly they blame religion religion is responsible and in case of hazrat muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they say muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he preached his religion by sword through force he forced his religion he forced his victory by sword but the fact is none of the prophets who came to different people in different ages they never forced their religion on any people on any person neither jesus nor moses nor gautam buddha nor krishna neither hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is far from truth it has nothing to do with truth if we see and read the holy quran the law brought by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there we clearly see the negation of such view rather the holy quran established peace in the world and it, it was propagated and preached in peaceful way peaceful ways how holy quran and hazrat muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam worked for peace in the world that is found in numerous places in the law brought by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for example he as there is a lot of misunderstanding between followers of different religions so to remove that aspect i present before you from the teaching of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the holy quran one verse there are many verses to this effect but one of the famous verses is that the holy quran says that uh, all prophets came from almighty allah they are all venerable all respected all should be respected especially by a muslim who believes in muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if he does not have respect and honor for the prophets of other religion then he cannot be a follower of hazrat muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam send this peace the holy quran says that la nufarriqu baina ahadin min rasul la nufarriqu baina ahadin minhum that among those who were commissioned by allah in different ages we never differentiate differentiate between prophet and prophet they came from the same source from saying god to establish the kingdom of almighty allah so in that respect all are to be respected again 
a very clear declaration of the Holy Quran. It says that if anyone does not like to follow or accept Islam or any religion, he should not be forced. He should be free to follow any religion or reject any religion. The Holy Quran says, La ikraha There is no compulsion in the matter of religion. Everybody is free to follow or reject. And in Surah Kahaf, Allah says, Ulil haqqa min rabbikum. Addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says that you declare amongst people that truth has arrived. Truth has come. Now you are free to choose to accept it or to reject it. So clear religious freedom has been given by the Holy Quran and Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this should be enough to establish peace in the world. Still, unjustly, people attribute to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the force. They say he preached and propagated his religion through force. Again, about peace, how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam represented and worked for peace, the Holy Quran says that La asubu lazina yadhuna min dhuni dhani Fa yasubu laha atuam benayayay You should not use any abusive language against those who are worshipped by the idolaters. Those who worship idols, you should not use any abusive language against their idols. Otherwise, out of their spite, they may abuse your true God. So such a wonderful principle has been mentioned in, in, in this verse of the Holy Quran. That in this world, there are mi millions of people who worship idols mm -hmm. or who worship other things. The Holy Quran addresses the Muslim that do not use any derogatory word against anybody's idols, against anybody's God, be they imaginary, be there anything or any being, you should be, should not be disrespectful to their God. Otherwise, they will use abusive language against your true God. So this is again such a wonderful principle has been given by the Holy Quran and taught by Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Again, religious tolerance and religious freedom and the respect for the views of other people, I mean, we see in numerous places in the Holy Quran and in the sayings of Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We know very well that a delegation came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam from Najran. They had difference of opinion, difference of views with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They had long discussion with him. See the tolerance of Rasul Karim, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They did not agree on any subject. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Christians, they could not agree. But Muhammad never said that since you, are, you don't agree with me, so I will kill you. He gave them full religious freedom there. At one stage they said, they said we are going out, this is our time of prayers, so we want to pray now. Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him says, that you can pray in my mosque. This is a place of God. You can worship here in your own way. So this is another proof that Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throughout his life, he worked for peace and he gave complete free religious freedom to anyone and everyone. Now comes the battlefield. Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. As I said, many allegations brought against him that he prayed or preached or propagated his religion by self, which is, as I said, a total lie. Throughout life, he has been patient. He was never aggressive. He had to leave his own motherland, Mecca. They took refuge in Manila. There also, the disbelievers of Mecca did not allow them to live in peace. 
They chased them, traveled 250 miles from Mecca to Medina. In the vicinity of Medina, the Muslims had to fight for their own existence, not for preaching Islam, not to force anyone to accept Islam. And this is clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran, in Surah, it's called Surah Hajj, that Allah only then, God Almighty gave them permission to take salt, to just to protect their own existence, not to preach Islam. There also it is mentioned in the Holy Quran that at that time, if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his followers, had they not fought against these people, then no religion of the world could exist because the aggressors could attack any religion and every religion. The Holy Quran says that we are allowing you now to take sword in your hand for the protection of synagogues, temples and mosques and the place of worships of different religions. So again Muslims had to fight only for the freedom of religion, not to force their own religion on other people. Everyone and anyone should be free to practice and preach his own belief and his religion in a peaceful manner. That's what Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu and his followers assured after their migration from Mecca to Medina. And again, in the field of battle, when in a state of battle, normally normal situation does not prevail. Normal situ situation does not mean anything. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught his followers some principles even for the battlefield. He said, in the when you were in the battlefield, he says that uh, Muslims, uh, no infants should be killed by any Muslim fighter. No woman should be killed. No old person should be attacked. No civilian should be attacked. No tree should be cut off. No place of worship should be desecrated or damaged. And no priest should be killed. So this is a complete religious freedom in spite of the enemy forced the Muslim to take sword for their own existence. Even in the better faith, this is the humane aspect of the teachings of Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then, in fact, all the teachings, all the whole life of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was peace. And this is not at all plain. As I said, if you neutrally read all of his statements, what he made, and with an unbiased mind, then in every word of Muhammad you will read peace and harmony. About neighbors, he says, that uh, we coexist in a society with other people, we live with the people of other religion, we live with Christians, Hindus, Jews. Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu never said that because of your religious difference, you should not be nice and kind to your neighbors. Rather, we find the contrary in his teaching. He says that who believe in Allah and hereafter, he should respect his neighbor. Again, Hazrat Ibn Umar, one of the very famous companions of Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Ibn Umar and Hazrat Aisha, wife of Holy Prophet They say that Holy Prophet said, Gabriel kept on exhorting me about the neighbor <coughs> till I thought that he would include him in the category of heirs. That means Jibreel, Angel Gabriel was stressing so much on the rights of neighbor. Holy Professor, I thought that he will be he will inherit my property. So much emphasis and stress laid on the honor and the respect and the rights of a neighbor in Islam. Again, Muhammad Sallam said that somebody asked, How shall I know that I am doing good? O Prophet of Allah. He said, if your neighbor says that you are doing good, then you are good. But if he says that you are bad, then you are bad. 
So this is a license. A neighbor has been given a license by Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he, if his license is clear in your favor, then you can tread the path of paradise. Otherwise, it is very difficult. So this is uh, every word of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is peace. Hazrat Abu Huraira this is one of the very famous companions of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, just one minute. <coughs> Holy Prophet sallallahu said that by Allah, by Allah, he does not believe. He again repeated, by Allah, he does not believe. He repeated third time that by Allah, he does not believe. Abu Huraira says that I asked Holy Prophet of Islam that, O Prophet of Allah, who does not believe? He said, whose neighbor is not secure against his mischief. If my neighbor is not secure for my mischief, then according to the clear declaration of Muhammad Rasulullah, I am not a believer. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And another version of this hadith, of this saying of Muhammad Sallallahu says that this is in Muslim shaykh. In Muslim it is said that he will not enter into paradise, such person will not enter into paradise. About the family life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when it is time, just please, then I will stop here. All of his wives, today people talk many nonsense things about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family life, uh, but all of his wives indiscriminately talk in favor of his high moral quality, his justice to all of them in all sense of term. As we read in the sayings of Hazrat Rasulullah and the history of Islam, which was of course preserved by those people who lived at his time. We Ibn, take it Ibn Hisham, take it Bukhari, Muslim, all the original sources preserved this, this reality. Today's generation does not know, out of their biasness, out of their enmity to Islam and to Muhammad sallallahu Islam, sometime you will see Salman Rushdie raises his head, sometime many other writers, they talk so much nonsense against Muhammad sallallahu Islam. But those who lived at his time, all the companions. When Muhammad Rasulullah was delivering his final speech at the, at the time of his final pilgrimage, you know the number was more than 200,000. All of them, and take all of his wives, indiscriminately everyone spoke about his high moral quality, his nice attitude, his nice behavior to his fellow, uh, I mean, followers, and to his family members as well. About his family, Hazrat Aisha, Razi Allah, the wife of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says that he used to help us in family affairs, would help in cleaning house, would repair his shoes and clothes, would help us in carrying our household responsibilities. He would appreciate their every little effort and never criticize their style of running house or family life. He said in, in his uh, last address, as I said just now, in last pilgrimage, the best <coughs> among you are those who, be, who behave best towards his wives. I am the best among you towards my, my family, towards the family. The best among you is one who is most kind to his wife, and the worst among you is the one who treats his wife badly. Again he says, O oh, people, it is true that you have certain rights with regard to your women, but they also have rights over you. Remember that you have taken them as your wives only under Allah's trust and with His permission. If they abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Do treat your women well and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed helpers. So this is about family life. Again, just a last few points, then I'll come to an end. About, we know today's word, as I said, that full of 
disorder, chaos and strife everywhere. And this is mainly because owing to the fact that people have forgotten to give rights to other people. They have forgotten to do justice to other people. They have forgotten equity in society. But Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa if you read his life, from the very beginning to the end of his life, he was so, I mean, just in dispensing his responsibility in the society that you will find nowhere in the history of humanity such examples. For example, the Islamic law which he brought, it clearly says, one of the verses I'm just going to read, that in Allah yamur bil adli wal ihsani wa yidai zil qurba wa yalha nil fahshai wal munkar wal bagi yayadukum la'allakum tadakkarun This is a very famous verse of the Holy Quran and in Islamic Friday services, on every Friday, Muslim Imam is ordered and instructed by the founder of Islam that this verse must be read. Khutbah is Sani, that is in second khutbah. And this verse speaks about justice and fair play in the society and equity. And about, talks about the rights of other people should be respected, should be established. They should be given their rights. And the translation I should read, Verily Allah enjoins justice and doing of good to others and giving like kindred and forbids indecency and manifest evils. There are many such verses to this effect found in the Holy Quran. For example, another verse reads that Waiza Hakam Tumbaina Nasan Takumidatu speaking about uh, justice and fair play, the Holy Quran addresses the rulers, those who are in power, those who have been empowered by the society, but by their votes and ele in election they come to power. How they should, they, should, they should rule? The Holy Quran says that when you judge between men, judge for justice. Excellent that is which Allah punishes you. Muhammad and his followers practiced and followed this instruction of the Holy Quran to the letter. I give one or two examples. For example, it is preserved in Islamic history that, uh, you know, in, in the society of Medina, there were people of different denominations, uh, Jews, Christians, and uh, uh, the worshippers of nature. And people of different denominations would live in their society. So one day, what happened? Uh, a Jew came to Holy Prophet Wasallam complaining against uh, a Muslim whose name was Abdullah. And he said that uh, this companion of yours is not returning my money. He owes me four uh, dirham. Repeatedly I requested him to return my money, but he didn't. Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, asked his follower, is it true? He said, yes, it is true, O Prophet of Allah. But I don't have any ability now to return the money. After the expedition of Khaybar, I will be able to return his money. Hazrat Muhammad Wasallam, addressing him said, just now at this very moment, return his money. This is his right. He said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I don't have ability now to do that. I don't have financial uh, ability. He repeated third time. And according to the, um, the style of Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu the tradition, when he would repeat anything three times, what he meant, that this must be done at this very moment and you will not, will not be pardoned, you will not be forgiven. So we, we read in the tradition that that companion went to market, bazaar, he had one turban on his head. When condition was very, they, they lived in a very poor condition, you know, financially the society was very, at a very rudimentary stage you could say. So he sold his turban for four dirham and returned the money to that Jew. 
So Muhammad Rasulullah did not say that, oh, this is my companion, you are a Jew, so you don't have any right. No. This is justice. You will see at every step of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu life. And then, how as a leader, as he was taken as a leader of the society, he was the head of the state, Madina state. Look how he rules there. Sometimes some dates of charity came. His own grandson, Hazrat Hassan, was hungry. He just he took one date and just started eating, put it in the mouth. Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, saw it and immediately, in a loving manner, just brought that out, that date from his mouth with his finger. And he addressing him, he said, this is not for you. We do not have any right to eat the dates of charity. These are for the poor people of the society. So this was the way how Muhammad Rasulullah ruled. That's why in a very short span of time, in a very short period of time, his teaching spread all over the world. It did not take long time. In reality, this was the beauty of his teaching. The beauty of the practices of Muhammad Rasulullah The excellences, what morally they showed and established in the society, that made Islam spread in the world. The last incident, then I'll come to an end. You know, just before his death, when he was ill with his last ailment, it was difficult for him to visit mosque. But one day, he invited his companions, and he said that, I don't know how long I will live. That's why before returning to my master, I want to be clear myself in this very world. If I ever made, if I ever caused any injury to you, or if I ever injured your feeling, then today I want all of you to tell me if ever I did that physically or this your emotional wise, ever I injured any one of you, today you can retaliate. And I want to be clear in this very world. I don't want to go hereafter with the burden of such injustices to anyone. You know what happened? All the companions were thinking, a man who dedicated every moment of his life for the comfort of others, how can he cause any injury to us emotionally or physically? While they were thinking about this, one of the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu stood up. He said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I have something to retaliate today. Muhammad Sallallahu invited him, said, Yes, you come and retaliate. Take revenge the way you like it. He said, Prophet of Allah, on the, on the day of the battle of Badr, when you were straightening or straightening the lines, you hurt me with your elbow on my tongue. That might have touched his body. So today I want to take revenge of that, O oh Prophet of Allah. So all the companions were, they were so angry and raged that what happened to this person? But Muhammad Salas has calmed them and he's invited him and said, please do, take your revenge. Then he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, that day my body was bare. I was not wearing any clothes. So it makes, I mean, I'm sorry for the emotion. I mean, it's difficult to narrate. So he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, you should remove your cloth so that I can take revenge in true sense. Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah lifted his shirt and that companion immediately kissed the body of the, the most holy person. I'm sorry to. And he said,
He asked why he did that. He asked the companion why he did that. He said, Prophet Allah, you, you are saying you will not live long as I can, I can hear from his voice. Maybe this is the last opportunity to touch your holy body. So he kissed his body and that's how he took the revenge. So Muhammad Islam presented peace and justice in society. So wrongdoers are those people who talk nonsense about this holy person who established the respect and honor of all prophets of all religion and gave complete religious freedom and freedom to accept or reject any god and any god. Uh, every god. Wow.